But first tonight, the policeman who was deliberately mown down after telling a driver to get off his mobile phone. PC David Hoyle suffered four broken bones in his back in the attack in Bradford and was off work for three months. But the driver escaped an immediate jail sentence, something which has angered PC Hoyle, who was off duty at the time, the Policeman's Union and the Police Federation, and a West Yorkshire MP who's repeatedly called for tougher sentences for those who assault members of the emergency services. Chris Kiddy has our main story this evening. Well, next tonight to a family who say they've endured 12 years of anguish and have been forced to pay overpay an extra £75,000 for their mortgage because they've been unfairly trapped on high interest rates. Yes, James and Louise Maul from York are among 140,000 so-called mortgage prisoners, victims of the fallout of the collapse of the lenders like Northern Rock more than a decade ago. Those affected can't move house and can't switch to a cheaper mortgage. They're now calling on the government to end their ordeal. John Hill reports. Louise Moore there ending that report by John Hill. We'll do stay with us. Still to come on the programme this evening. Well, next, police in Rotherham have arrested two people on suspicion of facilitating female genital mutilation. It comes after a woman reported that she had been subjected to FGM. The two people, a 40-year-old man and a 38-year-old woman, have been released on bail while further inquiries take place. Well, today is International Day of Zero Tolerance for FGM, a crime which is rarely spoken about or reported to South Yorkshire Police. A charity has launched a new campaign to get men to say no to FGM. Survivors believe it is vital that young men are given a voice on an issue that is predominantly centred around women. Mithya Rajan has the story. There have been fresh calls today for hard shoulders to be reinstated on smart motorways. A safety review is being carried out by the government following two high-profile deaths and amid concerns over the dangers posed to stranded drivers by all lanes running. Well, Highways England says it's committed to safety and supporting the Department for Transport, but speaking on ITV Yorkshire's political programme Last Orders, Rother Valley's new MP says action is needed now. Well, now, throughout the day in your school or workplace, you may have been encouraged to sit down and have a conversation. It's all part of a Time to Talk day, challenging the stigma of mental health. Yes, one of the groups being focused on this year is children, with one in eight having a diagnosable mental health condition. That's roughly three children in every classroom. In Rotherham and Doncaster, a new £1.5 million initiative has been set up, as Sarah Clark reports. Well, the ITV Evening News continues at 6.30. Here's Mary. We'll do, Mary. Thank you. Football now. Stuart McCall says... Now, Super League closed ranks today amid controversy over the signing of Israel Folau. The... Sorry? No. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. The rugby union star who was sacked by Rugby Australia for posting homophobic comments on social media could make his debut against Wakefield Trinity at the weekend. Uh, it is me now. Rugby bosses say that they were powerless to stop Folau signing for the Catalan Dragons but have vowed to take new measures to block any controversial signings in the future. David Hurst reports. Well now, Doncaster's Louis Tomlinson has been out and about across the country promoting his upcoming world tour and his new album. But wherever he went, the singer, who became a star with the band One Direction, couldn't help himself promoting his hometown too. Not only that, but he's made sure that the tour, which goes to 18 countries, includes a date in, you've guessed it, Doncaster. Here's Grace Melody Gardner. Where How's, he'll always have a warm welcome. How's he sitting on that wall? Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Thanks very much indeed, John. Now, finally tonight, to the second World War hero from Newark, awarded a clutch of medals by six countries and the MBE, who died last month at the age of 95, sadly leaving no surviving family. Yes, Jim Orton flew 27 missions with 178 squadron, dropping vital weapons to Britain's Polish allies in Warsaw. Today his funeral took place in his hometown. Hundreds of people, many who'd never even met him or heard of him, turned out to pay their respects and Sally Simpson was there too. What Very a great well. tribute to Very well a great deserved man. Send -off, yeah, it? yeah. Just what funeral. was required. Perfect stuff. It's weather time now. Uh, here's John with a forecast. John, thanks very much. That's it from us. Our next update will be at 10.30 tonight. The national and international stories are coming up next with Mary Nightingale. Well, for now, from all the team on calendar, thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye for now. Good night.